a lot of questions about grading like all the time and it becomes a little like overwhelming and then brian is joined he'll be here in about 20 minutes he's in class slacker um but he's uh, he'll be here soon and he's getting inundated with questions so it's one of these things where why don't we pour back into the customer so you guys can understand uh grading anybody on uh i get questions from it through uh, our live our breaks group now in the store and it's like maybe i can impart some of the basic stuff that i understand about grading where we've come in grading um, real quick question, if you graded a card or you have a card at grading through the shop, raise your hand. All of us. Okay, almost everybody here. Okay. Alan, you'll get there, it's all right. Yeah. Red Ryan, you'll get there. You graded plenty of cards, Bill. Yeah, I went like uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoying the sandwich. So, um, he's, he's enjoying his dinner. Good. So what, what our heart has been is when we had the shop, we started, it was like, grading is like intricately woven into the market now. It's like, it is the hobby. Yeah. And whether you don't like grading or you do like, it doesn't matter. It's just a huge part of the sports collecting world. Mm -hmm. And I think since it's become so massive, especially in the last five years, there's so many um, misunderstandings about grading. There's so many people who think grading is this when it isn't. It's so much more in depth. And uh, we wanted to make the shop kind of you know, a, a place where they're a hub for grading. So b before we finish, I actually, we finally created like an official form for submissions. In the past, it was always, yo, Jamil, yo, Brian, yo, Meredith, here's net seven cards, send these to PSA. We put a little sticky note, put it in the back in the stack and just drives us crazy with trying to keep it all organized. We have it all organized, um, but we want to have a little bit more formality to it. So I'll get, we'll go over this at the end so everybody can kind of know what the heck's going on. And before I forget, we do have PSA DNA in store in February. There are flyers, and I'll talk about that uh, before we finish. But what I thought we would do, uh, we're calling this Mealy Pops 101, whether it be streaming, whether it be live, um, because I want to give a basic introduction into a topic, and then we can kind of go. It's not 201 or 102, it's, or not 103, it's 101. So what we'll do as best we can to just do a general overview, give you about 15 minutes. I have some thoughts on that. And then what I wanted to try and do, I don't know if we'll have a chance to do it on the big screen. Uh, but show you a little bit more in depth uh, things that I look at. And we have some examples of cards and different things that I want to show you guys as well. So it seems like everybody here has graded something or owns a graded card, right? You've all heard the term gem mint. You've all heard the term, you know, uh, uh, probably, uh, let's think of some other terms in, in the grading world. Black label, pristine, right? These big catchy words. Have you ever heard the word pop or population report, right? There's a lot of... Uh, I've, I've found a lot of misunderstanding with what that is. And then just kind of the ideas of eBay and Com C and Facebook Marketplace and selling graded cards. How do you know if a card is authentic, even in a graded slab? Because that's another world we're getting into with people are forging graded cards. So hopefully we can touch on all that tonight. And I hope to answer those questions. So the questions were, um, what is card grading? Uh, you guys have any sheets? I have it all mapped out here. What is card grading? Why is grading important? The differences between PSA and BGS, and then that fourth one is, what was it? Oh, why should I be grading and what should I be looking for in my cards? That's kind of the nitty gritty. In fact, did you get a, a basic thing? Do you want a paper for notes or anything like that? No, I'm good, dude. Okay. Where's the math? Uh, what did I say? There you go. That's a cute backpack. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Oh, what color is it? Yeah, they're crushing you right now. Is Tia Lynn? Don't step on the court. Aqua Marine. You need my laptop, right? So, change, yeah, pull your laptop out and start it up. Yeah. And we'll, we'll have to get a Millie Pops backpack. There you go. So. Working on that. Um, cool. I do have some questions. Those are going as well. Along, so maybe we'll do some free packs tonight as well. I know Beck's all about free Woo! packs. So. It frees me. <laughs> it's quite so, safe. Let's see real quick. It's the big, we got tape on it. Neat. Oh, it does have an HDMI. Here's what I want you to do. Can you turn this on over here? Uh, plug it in the HDMI, and then I guess plug it into the power. Brian saves the day, guys. You got to oh. clap it up for Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> he saves the day. He saves the day. <laughs> so here we go. All right. So what is card grading? All right. That's a very simple question. It seems silly, but let me give you the background. I think it gives a lot of uh, uh, details and information, understanding the differences and okay. what's going on. So. You're on camera right now, dude. Oh, yeah, see, yeah. That's what yeah. I was looking for. Say hello to everybody. Say hello to everybody. Say hello to everybody. All right, so card grading is the process of taking a simple card, Brian. Is taking a simple <laughs> card or collectible and then encapsulating it um, inside some sort of proprietary encapsulation method. PSA has their own, Beckett has their own, and SGC has their own as well. You do, you may see other grading companies pop up. Sometimes there are these. KSA. KSA is actually not a bad one, yeah. Mm. But you might see some of these kind of 
Gem or PGC, C, I mean, all these other ones, what they really are is a guy or two in their basement bought a machine and learned how to encapsulate. That's pretty much what they're doing. Uh, I would say in the marketplace we're in, BGS and PSA reign supreme. SGC is also up there. And you have some kind of smaller things, at, uh, uh, KSA and Sports Collectors Digest back in the 90s and things like that. So what do they do? They handle your card. They grade your card. They get an objective numerical evaluation. And, of course, they encapsulate it. Um, very rarely will you ever get a card slabbed or graded by PSA or Beckett outside of their facilities. Who knows where uh, PSA is at? California. California. Dallas, Southern California, right? And who knows where Be Beckett's at? Dallas. Yeah, can you stand back a little bit? Oh, yeah, yeah. Dallas, exactly. Russell's a good student up here in the front. So in Dallas, you guys. Try him. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you right. said that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we have to send the card physically to them. A lot of people think, like, you can bring it to the shop and get it done or they'll come. That's never the case. I've never seen a card shop or anything like that where they bring their giant machine that's their proprietary to the <laughs> shop. The one time they do that is the National. They do that. Uh, Brian got the CPSA, and they have it all covered, and Beckett has it all covered. But they do have their encapsulation machines there. That's why a lot of people with the big bunny cards like to take it to the National because they get it done on site. So we're always mailing cards off. We're not doing anything where we have it here. We don't live near Dallas. We don't live near Southern. We can't drive the cards there. So we're constantly mailing it. So understand that when you submit cards, we're going to be sending those off always. All right, so the three main companies, let's talk about those, the background of them, because it's kind of interesting. So we said one was PSA. Who knows what PSA stands for? Public Service Announcement. That was close. close. Professional yeah. Sports yeah, Authenticator. That was close. Who? Professional Sports Authenticator. This guy's you, the man. you can't play if you work here. No. <laughs> <laughs> I can't give you prizes. No. Um, Ask what their stock ticker is. Yeah, that's a good one. What are they traded on? Which stock market are they traded on? What's their stock ticker? The Nasdaq. Yeah, their stock and they're, really? yeah, and they're traded under CLCT. CLCT, which Collectors is Universe. Collectors Universe. I don't know what key stands for. So they are a publicly traded company on the NASDAQ. Hmm. Additionally, uh, PSA is also a coin grading company. See, Collector's Universe hmm. is the umbrella. Yeah. PSA is just underneath it. What else do they do? PCGS. PCGS coin Coins. Hmm. That's also Collector's Universe, as well as PSA DNA. Another backstory was very interesting. PSA DNA emerged from JSA. Jimmy Spence actually created that through PSA, and then he branched off to his own thing. So that's where PSA DNA started, was through the JSA kind of wing. Now he has his own branch. And when we talk about autographs, we have PSA, DNA, and JSA. And Steve Grad over at Beckett is BAS. He's the guy in Palm Stars. We won't get into autographs tonight. All right, so PSA, founded in 86, grew with the card market boom in the 90s. Massive started grading a lot of cards in the 90s. And just last year, I read this stat. I guess we could guess. All right, in increments of five, it's going to be anywhere from zero to 200. How many million collectibles of PSA certified total? This could be coins and cards. What do you guys think? Take some guesses. Millions of cards. They, this is their. This is what they reached last Five year. Million. Five 125. million. Five million. Twenty-five. Hundred twenty-five. Two hundred million. Hundred eighty. Hundred eighty. I feel cheap. Now. All right. <laughs> five million. What did you say? I feel uh, cheap. You said how much? Right? Five million. All right. Travis wins a pack. It was seventy-five million. Yeah, okay. okay. Seven, think about that though for a second. Seventy-five million certified collectibles. Collectors Universe did a lot, and that was there. That was that was what they did last year. Since they've and been in business. How much? Of, I'm just thinking. Of, what is that? I'm just thinking of the money that's flowing. That <laughs> yeah, if you go on, if you, you can actually search their annual revenue. You can see what it is. How many employees do you think PSA has? That's another interesting question. <laughs> Two thousand. Two thousand. Any other guesses? Five hundred and fifty. Two fifty. Two hundred fifty. I'm gonna give it to, to Ron. They're actually right at about four five hundred employees. So Pat for, for Ron and, and for Tra Tra Travis. Um, for, um, as we think about that, they do so many collectibles and we grade these bulk rates. It's, it's a wonder that so much of that stuff gets pushed out with that limited run. Beckett, on the other hand, found in 84 because of the magazine. Then they started grading cards in the 90s. Beckett is BGS, BAS, which is Beckett Authentic Services, and also they do comics, CBCS. So that's all done in Dallas. Um, they only have 150 points. Very interesting seeing the, the dichotomy between the two companies. Uh, SGC, if you really care, their uh, sports card guarantee, they're down in uh, Fort Lauderdale. They're known primarily for vintage, although they're trying to get into modern markets. Not sure how that's going. Brian and I could give you our thoughts on that, but we'll leave it for, for another day. They no longer have an autograph authentication branch, F, uh, SGC, and uh, I'm not really going to discuss them more than that today. So, All right. So there's multiple ways to grade a card as we talk about it. What are some ways that you can grade a card? You have the... Regular card to give it a numerical value, right? Come on in, Poop. 
Um, we have a numerical card to give just the value. You can grade just a card, the card with an autograph, right? Authenticate a card, it's saying it's legitimate, and then giving an autograph grade. And you can also grade a card and just authenticate the autograph. So there's all different kind of intricacies to that. But I want to talk about the differences between PSA and BGS because I think that's super important for that. All right. So I, I wrote down five things here, and it's on your paper. Why is grading important? What do you guys think? It's an independent assessment of a card's condition. Okay, so we have an objective element to provide a numerical value to the condition. Okay, so which would be important to a, a potential buyer of okay. the card. Exactly, so from that side, so you say what? Authentic. So it's authenticating, and it's also objectively giving a condition assessment to it. So that's one. Um, Track. Okay, tracking the database, right? Knowing where cards come. Uh, we'll talk some about the registries in a little bit. That's very interesting. Okay. Um, how about population reports? Because if we can know how much of a card is graded at a certain level, that can change the value of what that card is, the rarity of that card. And some of you are like, well, I don't have a 10 or a 9. In some cases, some cards, the pop reports are 4 and 6 and 7. They're not. So it's very interesting to learn what population reports are. We'll talk about tonight. Um, how about uh, preservation? That's a big thing with cards. Okay, so vintage cards, if they're not kept right, you guys, have you guys, has anybody ever seen a vintage card that's had like UV like damage, right? If cards aren't kept right, and the, the BGS and PSA holders are UV protected. So the key part is preser preserving the card the right way, and then not ever having to worry about how you have to preserve it uh, later on. Okay, and then lastly, this is something that a lot of people don't talk about. Do you guys know what a registry is? Who's ever heard of a PSA registry? Okay, so <clears throat> uh, I'll use Travis's example. Who's one of your favorite guys to collect? Right. 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 Front tail, front tail. Justin Tucker. Justin Tucker. I'll concede. Very interesting. You guys probably, if you were to grade your cards at PSA, you could probably fall somewhere on the registry with your personal collection of those players. And they actually track that. They actually track who has the best collection of a certain player. Obviously the big names. Let's use basketball, Kobe, Jordan, LeBron. There's some big time collectors in that. But if you have that kind of collection, and not only brings on a ride to you, but it also brings you buyers and, and or sellers, people looking to move their cards to you because they want to push it. So they do that for collections, and they do registries for sets as well. Yeah, so sets like uh, 2000, let's use Prism this year, basketball, right? It's very easy to get PSA 10s on a lot of that stuff and put the set up. But what about a, I don't know, what's a good uh, vintage 70 set? Russell? 72 Tops Baseball? There you go, 72 Tops Baseball. All PSA 10s, there's probably someone who has that, and they have the number one registry set. They can sell that set at a huge premium. So that's another intricacy that I think grading cards it helps with registry. Here's a, a cool thing about that that I forget to talk about a lot. Let's say you, you buy a collection, or you have some cards laying around, and you have some old vintage baseball 72 tops, <laughs> but you don't care anything about them. Yeah. But they look pretty good. Sure. You grade it, you get a 9, you get a 10. You know what happens? The person who's trying to build that registry on eBay has all that stuff saved. And they're going to buy that for top dollar just so they can build their sure. registry to bump up, 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 up. That's common cards. That's so I, I've been blown away by some of the stuff that we've sold that were higher grade vintage, eight, nines, and tens. People will pay top dollar for that sometimes. So another real, real important way uh, why it's uh, good to, to grade. So how do you, the registry? They maintain it, or do you, is it just like a subscription? Or it's all maintained. So you, so you have obviously have the serial number. Yeah. Right. And if you get to the number one status, I've heard that you have to kind of prove it sometimes. Like, I knew a guy I met last year at number one, actually, old Pokemon PSA 10 Hall of Foes, and he actually presented on it PSA. They brought him out, they paid him, they flew him out to the national, and he brought a lot of that out. So they catalog it. So you just put in the serial number. That's a key way to, mm -hmm. to enter it, right? Yeah. So if you don't have the serial number, it can't help. Now, I guess you could go online and say, I have this one and this and this one. But yeah, I think there's a scan element now, and they have an app for it. There's a PSA app, guys. There's a Beckett app. It's very helpful. You can scan a card. Um, the, the barcode right here or the uh, QR code on the back, it will pop up every information you need to on your smartphone. So those are some other unique things that are coming up. All right. Sorry to bore you a little bit about that. I wanted you guys to understand the background between uh, the grade. All right. Here we go. So let's talk about... The, uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, will those apps let you validate the card right there, too, if you're... Trying to buy something, you mean validate? Like, well, if, like, I mean, if they have serials and numbers, you can just quickly pull it up and. Yeah, like, like if you're buying from me and you yeah, want to yeah, see yeah. if that card is on the registry. Yeah. yeah, that's a great way to do it. I do that at card shows all the time. Yeah, if I, and then they have old labels and new labels. We'll talk about that too. That's another interesting element. 
but yeah, you can do that as well. Okay, PSA and Beckett. Let's talk about the differences between the two because I think this is the most important thing when you start to figure out why or which grading company do I want to use. All right, so we all know, and I'll pass some cards around here. You guys can have some Beckett and PSA in your hands here. Who we got here? Earl Campbell and Aaron Judge. All right, so these two that I'm passing on, the Earl Campbell and Aaron Judge, the Earl Campbell is the brand new label. If you look at it, it's got watermarks on the front and the back. Mm -hmm. has a hologram, has special code, and all that jazz, too. Um, here are two fairly new Beckett ones. Beckett doesn't have that high of a um, security measure as PSA does. Um, but I don't think that's a, that big of a deal. And then here are some Beckett cards you can see. All right. So let's talk about... Um, Let's just talk about the grading element. We all know it goes from what grade to what? Zero to Well, not zero. Authentic, Authentic then uh, one. There's no .5. I've never seen a .5 grading card. One to ten. All right? So on the PSA scale, what is a ten? What is it called? Gem mint. A gem mint. Okay. On the PSA scale, is there a 9.5? Okay. No. It's all zero. Only big for mints. Okay. Is there an eight? Is there a nine? Okay, that's a mint. We can, I'll pull it up too when we finish. Is there an 8.5? There is. So PSA goes uh, by half point from one to, to uh, 8.5, and then at nine it stops, okay? Uh, so I'm sorry, one to nine. There's no 0.5 difference. So the PSA 10 is the supreme card for the PSA mm -hmm. grading database, right? Now let's look at Beckett. Beckett also goes from authentic, one all the yeah. Which is called their pristine, and now I'm not sure if some of you have seen. They have another level. It's the perfect card. Oh, it's called a black label, and I've got my own thoughts on the black label, but it is what it is. Uh, they have a highest level. The black level uh, is considered a perfect card. Ten subgrades. You mean, and it's an you mean pristine isn't perfect? It's not perfect enough, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jeez, that's really pristine great. black label, Russell. Oh, okay. So, Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. So they have kind of these 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 tiers in Beckett. <coughs> So if we think about that just really quickly, a PSA 10 parallels to some people a BGS 10, BGS 10 black label, and sometimes a BGS 9.5. Like, people look at that very differently. So there's a very big subjective measure between the two of them. Um, all right, so that's a big, big difference, the 0.5 jumps, okay? PSA 9, PSA 10. Beckett goes 9, 9, 5, 10, 10 black label. So you got a lot of variance in that 9 to 10 range. All right, uh, Beckett holders, as you guys can see, big big case, thick case, PSA case, a lot thinner. PSA case, what color is it? Red. Red? Clear. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a trick question. The <laughs> label is what color? Red. Red. In Beckett, is it always silver? No. Obviously not. There's a black label. Gold. You have gold for the gemmet and the pristines, and then nine is silver and down. Uh, actually, nine goes to, is it 8.5? And then an eight, they make it a white label in Beckett. Um, you don't see a lot of 8.5 silver label. Yeah, but then yeah. an 8 is a white label, I think, right? Uh -huh. Everything lower than that. So there's a color differentiation. That can help you also understand when you're looking at graded cards. If you've got a gold label on Beckett, you know it's a gem mint or higher. Um, but there's no discrepancy at all with PSA. Um, serial number on each card, as you guys saw. Let's see here. Okay, this is, this is where it gets into where we all love to talk about. All right. So, let's start with Beckett. Our Beckett... Processing times guaranteed. What I mean by that is if you submit a card at a X lit service, 30 days, 5 day, 10 day, whatever it is, are they guaranteed? Now you can say no. They are supposedly guaranteed to when they are delivered. And I'll and Beck, you're correct on that. I will say this. I haven't had a problem with it. Every time we've sent and they it's been delivered on a date, as long as it wasn't processed during holidays. They've done 30 business days or 10 business days. Or we, Brian and I do a lot of five day on the big high-end cards. It's Brian's big money bison, so he's got all the high-end cards. But we do that five day to get the cards back very quick. Chris is on that as well, where we get it very quickly back. Is PSA guaranteed? No. No. <laughs> PSA is not guaranteed. Guaranteed to be late. <laughs> it's guaranteed to be late. There have been some rare cases when PSA has been early. Um, and we're learning how to do that a little bit better when you submit cards in clumps. So, for example, when we submit... Vintage in the future, we're going to submit vintage only together, modern only together, gaming only together. We're not going to mix them. That actually makes the processing a lot slower. So sometimes with PSA, we can get them back. We had a bulk order, 85 day that got turned around in 17 days, not too long ago. It was wild. Now the difference between that is you're not usually going to get 
<laughs> the early processing pop for, for PSA. With Beckett, I will say this, they're never really early, okay? They're going to be on time. They're, 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 you're paying for that service. So they're going to, even if they have nothing to do, it's going to be 30 days when you grade it. So understand that. That's a business day window. I think a lot of people don't get frustrated with PSA because um, they expect it to be like Beckett, and it's nothing like that with their processing times. Okay, grading times are not guaranteed. Um, Beckett starts... Uh, Processing that time once they get the delivery confirmation, it gets received at the facility. PSA, not the same. I know, Brian. I know. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> Come on, Brian. Yeah. 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 Let's talk to your mom. It's an alarm. It's an alarm. Yeah. It's an alarm. Okay. It's an alarm to wake up from class. So, so, so uh, when we talk about um, when PSA also starts their processing window, if you pay for a 65 day window, okay? They get it, let's say Monday. They don't necessarily start it on Monday. They start it from when they process it. That could actually be up to. We've had we've seen a 10 to 15 business days from when you actually get the package delivered to their facility. So you might say it's 65 day. Well, they may not process it for three weeks until two to three weeks after they get it. So that 65 day now becomes 85 or 90 or 95, or, and if they're behind 100. So understanding grading when we talk about these numbers is very important. Especially, and uh, Travis and I were talking about this, or Randy and I were talking about this recently, about the potential of a card, right? So right now, we I think I graded some Lamar Jacksons not too long ago on the potential that I was hoping they he made Super Bowl, and that I would have him for this weekend. Well, the truth is that order is not anywhere near done, <laughs> you know. And so I'm kind of glad in a way, but I lost on it. But but I'm really upset if I couldn't get those cards. And so you kind of have to play the game with that window. It's very tricky sometimes with PSA. All right, um, here's another very, very important aspect of PSA versus BGS that I think you guys should understand. Beckett does not base their pricing on declared value. You can send a $5 card or a Michael Jordan rookie, it's the same processing window. PSA uh, bases their processing on value, or what we call declared value, okay? So this is where it gets tricky. And this is something we've seen now. And again, the card world is demanded this because cards are so high, graded cards. If you send in, Ron has a, let's say he's got a Marcus Allen one of one um, card that he values at 500 bucks. And he puts that down 500 bucks. And the card comes back a PSA 10. PSA now has the right to say, well, the threshold you submitted it at was $500 or $499. It's actually worth more now, so we're going to upcharge you before we send it back. So that's happening now, um, and if we're talking about the high-end stuff, Mickey Mantle 52s, right? You know, things like that, ten thousand, twenty thousand dollar cards. You're looking at now five hundred dollar, one thousand, two thousand dollar rates to grade cards. So it's getting uh, it's getting kind of wild, um, but that I guess the market dictates that. And I'm not, I mean, it is what it is. That's that's where we're at with PSA. For those of you who are out there, and I'm not pushing one or the other tonight. I'm just trying to explain it. Beckett doesn't do that, okay? So they will not uh, upcharge you if you get a high grade. What, this is a dumb question. A, a, a car is graded 100% by a human being, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. No, but my question is, what quality are you getting versus 2,000 or 1,000? You're getting the same job done by that person. Sure. So you're not getting, you're not getting paying oh, more money. You're not getting more back, <laughs> yeah. back in terms of. What oh, they're doing, Yeah, you know what I mean. One hundred percent agree. I, yeah, I agree. Taxing because it's worth more because of them, it's worth more. Well, they, I mean, they, they made your card more valuable. Yeah. So, so that's their, that's the royalty they're charging. I mean, I'm not defending it, but that's what's happening. And that's now that just came out. Was it? Exactly. We noticed it last year, but then January one this year is when it all <coughs> kind of came to fruition, right? The processing times have also gone up. If you go on the PSA website, I could show it if we have some time. Um, so a lot of things to think about when it comes to. PSA versus BGS. Now, uh, one other thing that a lot of people don't know about PSA is they use something called qualifiers. Does anybody know what a qualifier is? Bill, what's a qualifier? Stains, creases. What do you mean by that, though? So let's say this card didn't say PSA 10 on it. Let's say it said PSA 9 on it, okay? Okay. And then it said OC next to it. Is that awesome. a PSA 9 mint card? Well, it's 9 with an off center or whatever. Okay. So it's got a qualifier, all right? PSA has five qualifiers. Um, off center was the biggest one. Um, I always forget them. So PD, which means print defect. ST, which means stain. OF, which is out of focus. I very rarely ever see OF. 
and MK, which means mark. So like someone wrote their name on the back of a card, um, you had an indentation or something like that. That's what an MK is. If that said PSA 9 on it and it said OC next to it, let's say that, right? Do, would we value that as a PSA 9? How would you value it? Why so? Yeah. I don't like it as much. Okay. Right? Not appealing, it's off-center. I generally at least go, well, some people go down two grades. Okay. For value. Yeah, I appeal to four. Sometimes I you know, take them and sometimes do it. It just depends on, on your interest on that particular car. Sure. A good rule of thumb is the minus two rule. A lot of people use it. If a card has a qualifier, it's minus two. Um, so it's something to think about when you're evaluating cards that are out there. You get a Mickey Mantle PSA 9, that's a mint, nice, fresh card. But if it says PD on it or OC on it, really tarnishes the value, I think, a lot of ways. So. Still, still what does off centering exactly mean? It might be your exactly. only way to afford a Mickey Mantle. It might be the only way to afford it. Exactly, sure. I mean, anything PSA 9 Mickey Mantle is, 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 is a pretty penny. Um, all right, we'll talk about the, the differences in it. But again, a print defect would be something like as a manufacturer, you have lines on it. Chris and I talk about Jordan a lot. The Jordan Fleer cards, 86, 87, had a lot of print defects all over the place. Funny lines, little bubbles, you know, the 70s cards, little bubbles you see. Um, <clears throat> a uh, stain would be anything that would be considered a stain. Even wax, if you ever open up a pack wax pack and they have kind of the wax on the back of it, if you grade that card like that, even though it came out of the pack that way, they're going to put the stain qualifier on it. So something to kind of think about. And um, the out of focus is the like if the image is wrong, and then the mark is again like we talked about some sort of indentation or something written on there. So come on in, there he is, the Moose Man. I'm late, no, you're good, dude. It's all right. Come on. <laughs> all right. So qualifiers are important. Now here's here's why I brought that up. If any of you guys want to grade a PSA card and you want to, you, you know it's off center, or you know that it's got a defect on it. Yeah. Brian could have given you his chair. You should take it. I want your chair, Brian. <laughs> 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 that wasn't a fan. Which one is the chair? This is the chair. This is it. Oh, this is where I'm Lord. sitting in. Uh, no, man. man Brian. <laughs> I live life on the edge. That's Brian. That's how he lives. Um, if you ever want to submit a card that has a defect on it, you can actually submit a card to PSA and say no qualifier. You can actually mark that on the sheet. When you submit them to us, you can tell us that. And that means that they will not mark it with the qualifier, but they'll usually subtract two from the grade they would have given it. So that is something to think about. Would you rather a PSA 9 OC or a PSA 7 of that card, right? Uh, there's a little bit of a game there, right? Maybe the grader says, oh, it's not that bad, and they give you a 8 or a 7.5 or something like that, right? But just something to think about. Okay. So how would it get a 9 if it was defective or off-center? So it looks mint, right? It's super, super sharp, but it's got a, a minute element to it. It doesn't make a gem mint. But that minute element is more of what they call a qualifier. Um, it's a great question. Uh, it's, it's really tricky when you start looking at things like that. Come on in, boys. Uh, so uh, PSA... I'm just trying to think, like, in, in terms of when it comes to, when it comes to qualifiers... <laughs> The one thing that you want to be very mindful of is, is some of the off-center qualifiers that I've seen are very, very subjective. And some people will regrade those cards. They'll take them out, crack them out or whatever, and then regrade them. And sometimes they'll get it without the OC. You can't get a 10 with a, with a qualifier. You can never get a PSA 10 with an OC or anything like that. That would never be possible. But they can't. Got, there are nine OCs I've seen them. You've seen them, right? Qualifiers. Brian likes Brian sees all sorts of cards. OK. Um, I think we kind of covered the differences between BGS and PSA. Questions about, I mean, just BGS and PSA in general. Talk about it. I would just, the reason I asked the thing about a human being, I would think by now that we should be able to, or it's going to come soon, where they're going to be able to put the car and scan the car, do whatever, and it's going to be done by a computer. <laughs> and I think you'd probably get a better, it would be, get a better grade than, sure. you know, down the line. I mean, yes. I would think that's where they're going. Yeah. I mean, people have talked about it for years. They've talked about doing this for years, and it hasn't happened. Um, is, the, is the community for grading right to a, new, a third or a fourth grader? Maybe. Um, you know, just kind of off the cuff, there was a big scandal last year with PWCC and PSA, and the CIA or the FBI was at the National investigating some of this stuff. And for me, um, I thought that was going to really crush PSA. Mm. And they've just well, only gotten stronger. <laughs> What's that? 
swept under the rug. And it seems like it seems no like, one like knows the, what happened to it. the hobby world is great, hobby world is very uh, forgiving in some ways, right? <laughs> so, um, so I don't know. I'll go ahead. Is, is there like uh, one one of them better for vintage versus the other, or for modern versus the other? Sure. Does that come into play? Yeah, I'm gonna pass these two uh, cards around. I don't want to show you guys the difference. This is the same exact card, so you guys see this, but it has a different grade on the top. Make sure you see the difference. Um, typically, uh, a lot of people like vintage uh, PSA. Typically, they, I mean that's kind of the grade. A PSA three and a BVG three are not the same card. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, same with an eight, seven, whatever. PSA vintage. Typically, in my eyes, and Brian and I, you've probably seen enough vintage now, they're pretty hard. <laughs> they're pretty hard to get high grade on PSA vintage, so I think they know that. I would say this, in the the, 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 the tiering of it, PSA be the top for vintage, Beckett would actually be parallel with SGC for vintage. I think some people look at SGC for vintage, and they like that grading almost as comparable to Beckett. Mm -hmm. Modern cards, I would have said this to you three, four, five years ago when we opened the shop, probably as well. Everybody, for the most part, modern cards have always gone Beckett, but there has been a massive resurgence in the last year for the PSA 10 rookie card, and it could be any year, modern or, or old. Um, the, uh, I think about cards like Prism. You know, Prism is a big brand, football, basketball, hockey, all the different types of Prism they have, baseball. And um, the rookie cards that are PSA 10 are outperforming the BGS 9.5 by a lot. Um, and the BGS 10 uh, seems to be higher than the PSA 10, but it's very hard to seem to get that. Um, so, I don't know, any thoughts on that? Do you agree with that statement? Yeah. Okay. What about a BGS with like sub 10s on it? Does that make a difference in yeah. terms of the PSA 10? If so, you got a 9.5 with sub 10s on so it? So the one thing I didn't talk about the differences, right? Between PSA and Beckett is what? Subgrading. Subgrading. All right. So subgrading, for those that you know, you get four subgrades on a Beckett card. If you elect to do that, we have a, a, su a submission that's coming out where you can pay half the price and not get subgrades, which I can talk a little bit more about as well. But <laughs> subgrades, what are the four subgrades? Real quick. Come on. Center, 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 uh, edges, uh, a lot of times they can be frayed. I guess, let me, let me talk about these a little bit here. We're kind of jumping into the, the next part, which I think is good. So um, the question on the paper says, why should I be grading? What should I be looking for in my cards? All right, so when it comes to four subgrades, I would venture to say, and I'd be interested to hear what Brian thinks and maybe some of Chris and some of you guys that grade a lot, uh, as, as well as, as Bill too. I think centering is probably the most important. I do. Mm. Because I think that the other elements can be very subjective. I think surface is the least important. Okay. Um, yeah. And I think, and then I would put, I would put corners next and edges third. So my rating would be centering, corners, edges, surface. What do you think? Yeah. Do you agree with that? Surface is subjective. Surface is very subjective. But I mean, of course, PSA cares more about corners than Beckett does. They could care less about centering. Yeah. PSA. Yeah, I agree with that. I th well, I won't say care less. Not, I mean, they yeah. care not. They're they don't forgetting. care less. They care less. Like they care less. Than <laughs> they don't exactly. care less. They, they care, care less. Than Brian's spitting some raps here, guys. Oh, Be careful. Hey, he's, cool. he's breaking. Right. <laughs> no, I think there's a, there's there's a joke in there somewhere. Yeah, they don't there's, care as much as Beckett. Yeah, Beckett centering seems to be a lot tougher on centering than PSA does. I agree with that. Um, so a subgrade, right? Uh, if I have a card that has all nine fives as a subgrade and a gem mint grade, that's worth more than a card that has three subgrade nine fives and a nine. We know that, okay? But what else is worth more? Let's say Scott, you have a card that's a nine five, and you got two tens, and you got a nine and a nine five, and then Brian's got a card with all nine fives. What do you all think? What would be worth more? Let's, the one with the two tens? No, I said, would it depend on if they're both nine fives? Let's just say that like what's the nine where the tens and the nines at, right? Let's say they're let's say that the, the, the tens are not centering. I would probably still want the tens. The ones with the tens? Am I right? It's a it's a great question. There's a lot of collectors out there. Think about it. I would say there's a value, a premium, on a card that's considered a true grade. And what that means is that it has no subgrades lower than what the grade is. So if it's a nine, all of them are nines or higher. If it's a nine five, all of them are nine fives or higher. Even with a card that has two tens and one nine. I, 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 I venture to say that. Not every card's different, and the years are different. Chris, what do you think about that? It's an interesting perspective. I never thought of that. Yeah. So just things to think about when you're, when you're grading cards, you're buying grading cards, a lot of things to look at. Um, old label versus new label. Okay, I've given you guys all the new labels of cards, okay? Um, the old label and old types of grading 
there's theories out there that they say when they first came out with grading, it was a much harder. So there are some people who will buy graded cards with old labels, resubmit them, crack them, resubmit them, and then they get higher grades. I've seen that happen too. There's a theory in that as well. Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot of elements there. So I have a question. So you got you said they keep the register of it. Yeah. Right. Of a card, if you keep cracking them and sending them back, the case has a registration on it. Yeah, but it's a great question. What about the same serial number? So let's say it's twenty four of ninety nine, but it's the same card over and over and over. Um, I don't think they're following. I don't think they're tracking that. Now, from the graders' perspective, I've heard that they track it at that level, and so if they see it come through again, they look it up really quick. They just give the same exact grade. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm not behind the scenes and all that stuff. But. <laughs> yeah, they, or they they play that game. You go between agencies, right? Okay. All right, one real quick question that I didn't bring up before we get into the four subgrades, okay, is with Beckett cards and you have an autograph card. Tony hits, uh, what do you, what's some nice autographs you hit? Otani. Otani. That's a great one. No, 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 Otani's a great one. Let's talk about that. Do you have it with you? <laughs> it's a soft spot. Do you have it? Do you have it? No. Okay, it's all right. So, uh, Tony, in the prize case, in the Donner's box, has been sitting on the on wall for like nine months. It's a private SIGS case hit, Otani, rookie, on card, beautiful card out of a $75 box. And the autograph on it, I thought, was a little, little <coughs> streaky. It wasn't bold. And the reason why that bothers me is because when we send that to Beckett, they're going to probably put a nine autograph on it. Okay? But we sent it to PSA instead, did not grade the autograph. Okay? So it had a general grade. And I think, from what I've seen in the market, a lot of people will be forgiving with that. They look more at the overall grade on something. Like a BGS 9.5 gem mint with a 9 autograph is not very appealing to people. But if you crack it and you send it to PSA and maybe it gets a, a PSA 10 with a no autograph grade, that's worth a heck of a lot more money now. Uh, even as a PSA 9 sometimes could be worth more than the gem mint with a 9 autograph. So something to think about with autograph grades. So when you send stuff to Beckett, it has to grade the autograph. You can't, there's no service or they do not grade the autograph any longer. A long time ago, they stopped. They didn't, you, you could pick that, but now if you send a Beckett, you always have to grade it. PSA, you do not. Um, in our uh, in our uh, submissions that we'll give out later, when we do the bulk grading and when we do the uh, thirty uh, the twenty or the thirty day grading and sixty five day grading for PSA, that's not an autograph grade. So it's just going to be a strictly a card grade. Okay. I don't. Did you guys see those two Pokemon cards? One had a one had an authentic on it and one said authentic with a card grade. So that's just a quick variation of how you can grade card differentiation, uh, differentiations in PSA. So which one of those is worth more than? To me, the that knowing that market, the one with the card grade that says nine on it with an auto grade is worth more because you have a mint card with a grade. That's a whole, that's kind of a different market because it's, it's great gaming, but um, I would say because the card is a nine, people would buy it more. Okay, make sense? Okay, uh, real quick, I want to I want to give these out, and then we're going to talk about subgrades and what I, some things to start looking for. This is, this is where we're getting the nitty gritty. These are called card savers. If you don't have them, we do sell them. Um, I can always give you some too. These are how we submit all our cards in. Some graders don't like it. They put them in top loads. They do all this. Here's why I like card savers. They're very easy to get the card in and out of. Okay, if you send a card in a top load to a grader, you have to force them maybe to cut the tape and pull it out sometimes. These are very easy to take a card in and out, and they're actually a kind of a, a cool, transparent, like little frame to be able to look at a card and grade it. So um, you guys should just kind of see what these are like. These are called semi-rigid card savers. You put them in a penny first or no? Um, I, we always do when we submit them. Okay. We always do, unless it's like a small tobacco card because when you put them in, sometimes they kind of move and stuff. But uh, we usually do. Now, there are other people who do mass grading that don't do that. It just seems that when you do submit with us, we're always going to do that, so everybody knows. Okay. I think I went through that. All right, what we're going to do is pop reports. Uh, Brian, can you come on here um, and then just... Look up uh, it's on, the website is on the page there. If you want to show Brian where what the website is, and pull it up on here, and we'll put it up on the TV. So if you can find, if you can find that one, if you can find that one, and then you can also find just Google PSA pop report. So and go to resources. Okay. Right. we're gonna put some stuff on the screen. Just saying. So you can have cards that have two tens. What's up, guys? What's up, real quick? I'm just trying to figure out what the rating. So you can have two tens and two nines, and it can be a nine. Or you can have two tens and two nines, and it could be another. So we have one that's a ten and one that's a nine. So even though they have the same subgrades, they yeah. can be different. Yeah. 
how does that make sense? I mean, just if you have two cards that have the same subgrades, which those four parts are making up the grade, okay. how can you have one as a 10 and one as a 9? So you wouldn't have, if they're exact same, you wouldn't have that. So every that is 10 corner, 10 in the surface. Yeah, let's look at one together. All right. There's a couple of cards floating around still, right? So you see the subgrade. If you have a, that's always going to be a 9. The subgrades are always going to be a 9, okay? Um, you might have a, a 10 or a 9 autograph. That might differentiate. But those subgrades are always going to be this, the same grade overall. So every combination of subgrades um, spits out a, a grade. Oh, okay, that's a great question. Okay. So what if you have a Beckett card that has a 9, 5, 9, 5, 9, and 9 in its subgrades? What's the grade? 9. It's a 9. What if you have a, a Beckett card that has a 9, 5, a 10, a 9 and an 8.5. Still a 9. What if you have a Beck, I've seen this before, that has subgrades 10, 10, 10, 8. 8.5 or 9, depending. So the rule with Beckett is that the lowest subgrade on the card, not counting the autograph, the lowest subgrade on the card, the overall grade can only be 0.5 higher than that. Mm -hmm. so Unless it's a large variant, sometimes they let the, the grader have a subjective. If it looks really good, they may give a little bit of a bump. But across the board, most always, it's always going to be 0.5 higher than the lowest subgrade. This is the lowest of 8.5, so it's not. Exactly. Exactly. And if that had said 10, 9, 5, 9, 5, 8, it's still be here. It's because it's just like an average. It's not more divided by. It's a great question. It's not an average. You're not here to listen to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that. But then you get into like. One you just can't get back of, uh, you know, it's not Anthony Simons has an 8 on the surface. Yeah. I got the 10 on the edges, and they gave me a 9. I didn't have an 8 on the surface. Say it one more time. The Anthony Simons had an 8 on the surface, but the overall grade was a 9. Right, but it had. Because it had a 10, 9.5, 9.5. Right. So that, not going to cleaners. Yeah, so with that, what they do is they have, the, it's kind of an unwritten rule where they allow the uh, the grader to make it based on the, the appearance of the card, right? So that's kind of what's going on there. But for the most part, for the most part, if you buy a card and it's got a subgrade that looks really bright, like the little card that has back corners, and you look, the rest looks great, I probably wouldn't want to grade that. Just because it'd be very hard for that card to get that gem mint kind of level. So. Okay. All right, um, I think that's about it. Brian, anything else that I've not talked about with the differences between Beckett and PSA? All right, time out. Guys, come on. All right, you're here to listen to him. He's doing a class. He's doing a class. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing a thing online. You two chatterboxes yeah, over there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Please have some respect. Brian, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's um, appreciate it. Thanks, thanks, Ron. All right, um, let's talk about the four subgrades for a card, which I think will help you guys understand a lot, okay? So when we're talking about centering of a card, okay, they have, uh, let's see if I can do this really quick. Is it function, eh, poop, is it alt F10? What is it? Come on, help me out here. What are you trying to do? I want, want this to go on to that with just a quick. I don't know what to do. What do you Because you're the IT guy, poop. I'm just the janitor. <laughs> okay, it's all right. I can do it for the remote. Yeah, okay, so I'll put it on here what PSA shows with centering. But when we talk about centering, Ron, you asked about this. I need the other remote, the TV remote for it. When we talk about centering, there's left to right centering of a card and top to bottom centering on a card, correct? Okay. When someone says a card is 50-50 or perfectly centered, that means a card is perfectly centered left to right and top to bottom, all right? There are other terms that you might hear, 55-45, 60-40, 65-35, okay? PSA, before and there, mapping and how they grade cards, they say that according to what they do, a nine is this, and eight point five is this, and eight is this. According to centering, so let me see if I can pull it up. You got the other one. So in the in the production process, if they make say ten, they make ten, ten cards. I'm listening. One out of ten, two out of ten. Okay. Yeah. What's happening during that process that one of those cards out of those ten is going to be all centered? The cut. The, in, in the manufacturing process? Yeah. The cut of how they do it, the way that... So they put cards in card sheets, right? You guys have seen them in the 90s, people always had them. Ah, there it works. All right, so big card right. sheets, okay? Um, when they cut them with the laser and all that, if it's off, it's off-center. That's how they do it. Back in the 70s and 80s, and they do them by hand or something like that? I mean, I was born in 84. You guys have to help me out here. But the newer card yeah. would be less off-center than the older Yeah, I mean... Or it we, should be. We, we were talking about Prism, Prism Lucas. Prism Luca this year, the retails are horrible last year. 
the Zions are absolutely atrocious this year. So I think they're, I wonder in some ways if the companies are doing it on purpose. All right, so this is a good website to, if you don't know this website, it's just PSA card, but you go resources and then grading standards. You can click on all of the different elements. It'll tell you, let's just look at a, uh, So PSA 9 is a superb condition car that exhibits only one of the following minor flaws, a very slight wax stain on the reverse, a minor printing imperfection, or slightly off-white borders. We're talking about the color of the card. Centering must be approximately 60-40 to 65-35 or better on the front, and 90-10 or better on the reverse. Now, that's a wild statement there about front and back. A lot of people don't know this. The front of the card for grading cards is way more important than the back of the card. Um, According to, to, to PSA, I've heard it's 80-20. Their overall grade is 80% is the front of your total grade, 20% is the back, and I've heard this, uh, it was 85-15% for Beckett, the front of the card versus the back of the card. Yeah, go ahead, Poop. So what's, like, for PSA and Beckett, do they have, like, different scales they use, or is it, like, based on the same type of scale they use for centering, or, like, how, how are they different? Like, I how think there's a subjective... Get a and one get a centering, it's just I, that person? I think there's a subjective element to it. Yeah, I mean, it's a great question to ask graders is, um, there's a subjective element, they're seeing cards all day, all along, and they just see this is that, and they, they give it that subgrade or whatever or you're thinking. PSA, according to their standards, a nine should, should be 60-40 or 65-35 on the front, and 90 or 10 better on reverse. But that 60-40, is it the same for both, or is it? What do you mean? Oh, for Beckett. Is Beckett 64 the same as PSA 64? So Beckett doesn't have a grading uh, criteria like this that I'm familiar with. And if anybody, I could be wrong on that. I don't know if Beckett having one like this. Um, but and what's the centering in terms of what are they centering? Like? So this card's great to look at. So it's hard to see from there. But this side over here, a little bit less space here on this side over here. Okay. Uh, top to bottom, I would say that's 55, 45. And the left to right is probably 60, 40. What do you think, Brian? Fair? Yeah. All right. I mean, that's a, it's a kind of a hard card. It's a 52 mantle. It's a super friggin' hard card to get in high grade. Yeah. What about cards that don't have a border like that? So, so borderless cards. Bigger than the other. So <laughs> a lot of things I look at with borderless cards are nameplates. Rookie badge. Yeah, rookie badge, where it's at. I look at the nameplate down the bottom. I'll measure from left to right. What are some other things that we look at? That's hard. The knee, like sometimes like legs of the players yeah. on the side of the card. I'll look at other PSA tens on eBay, and I'll look at the ones I have at hand if there's any inconsistency yeah. in between the two. When you say measure, you mean literally take like a ruler to it and like. Um, I feel like I'm pretty good at eyeing it a card. I think Brian's get he's definitely grown very quick. He's got very good at eyeing a card. Um, if I were to grade something like that, absolutely okay. calipers, all that jazz. Um, but with vintage though, um, so like poop, you're you're talking about this between PSA and Beckett. I think when it comes to modern cards, right, we were talking about earlier, there are certain subgrades that I think with a Beckett are very hard, centering, very hard usually, um, or a surface. I have cards that I've sent a Beckett that have dimples, things like that, get nine five dents in them, and it's like, <laughs> whereas PSA, centering may not be as important on a modern, but a surface might be way more important to them on a modern card. You know, things, there's just, it's, just, it's intricacies that we learn, in the, and that's what something we can talk about, continue on, we could always have these discussions, so, um, does that help, Ron? Yes. Understand. So top to bottom, okay. Then on the back of the card, 90-10. Not as big a deal on the back of the card. We just saw a, a BGS. Were you the one who posted that black label, LeBron or Beck? Black Danny posted it, didn't he, in that little yeah. chat group? Yeah. BGS 10, black label. Top of the cream of the crop, LeBron James, right? Purple wave it was. Something like that. Prism parallel. The back of the card, the centering was like atrocious. But they gave it a BGS Rob, 10. Huh. BGS 10 black label. Rob? Yeah. Tell them to put it. Put it. <laughs> They can't hear. Oh, I know why. Because the the, the yeah. speakers back there didn't even think about it. So. So we can interrupt now. Oh uh, yeah, I can. I can. Uh, I'm gonna try to think if I can bring it up. Um, I was supposed to use the speaker off that. Didn't even think about it. Then did, did a chance to test it. Uh, Instagram will be. You can hear on Instagram, but not Twitter or the other one. Okay. Uh, you want to try and bring the snowball, the snowball as far as you can. What do you need? The snowball mic. How many people look? At it's because we have no mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where is it? Hey, hey, thanks, Tony and, and Beckford. Yeah, so how many people look at the cards? <laughs> like, uh, you have three people and like okay. two people think it's a nine, one person thinks it's a ten. So Alan has a great question about graders. Has anybody heard rumors on how many people grade a card? I was just about to ask that. I mean, I got it like a foot closer. You need it more than that? <laughs> <laughs> just don't yank it out the thing. Okay. That's, that's the far as it goes. Okay, that's fine. Okay. 
Supposedly, PSA, I've heard, it was supposed to be two to three graders per card. I don't know how they do that, if that's possible. I heard the same thing with Beckett as well. I don't know how it's possible, the amount of volume they pump out. It seems like that'd be super hard to see. Yeah, and then what happens if two of them disagree? Who, who wins? So, so the thought, it is supposed to be an average. That's actually how you get... bad day at work. Well, that's actually how you get point fives usually, is you get a nine or an eight or something like that, where that's how you get the average. That's what we're told from a consumer standpoint. I don't know what goes on behind the PSA closed doors, but that's what we're told around. So, okay. Um, the community needs to send somebody in there to like get a job. <laughs> a confidential. Like, okay, you know, let's go. Uh, I'll be the rat. The mole. Do you, uh, do you, you, <laughs> what is it? Tribute for tribute or whatever. Yeah, yeah. There's a. Yeah. Uh, that's what he's doing. We'll okay. Bring down the empire of PSA. All right. So <laughs> centering. So when we talk about cards of centering, left to right is very important. Uh, top to bottom is very important, and back to front is more important for the front than the back. Correct. Okay. When you look at a card, you should see if a card is centered. It's the thing you can't change. If you see a nicely centered card, that's always a great place to start looking at your collection, thinking about what you want to grade. Another thing about cards that people don't talk about sometimes, they're printed at a diamond, so you might actually see the line at an angle. That doesn't mean the card's been trimmed, because people think it's been trimmed sometimes. They may be slightly off tilt. Uh, just look at both borders. If they're both slanted, it'll make sense, right? Then it's called a diamond cut. Um, if they're really bad, they'll definitely get an OC qualifier with PSA, but not always. Um, I've had some Jordan rookies in the past and other vintage baseball cards that were diamond that didn't get uh, ring too bad. So, Okay, um, corners. Let's talk about corners of a card. What are some imperfections we can see with a corner of a card? You said rolling. I think you said like <laughs> rounding. Rounding edges, soft edges, whiting. whiting edges. How about a dark card with a white, white corner that sticks out? Kills a subgrade, right? Mm -hmm. How about a white card with a white corner? Doesn't affect it so much. Sounds crazy, right? But colors are important to card grading as well. Um, so we have we have uh, softening, whitening, and then of course dings. What's a ding? You drop a card or you get out of a pack. Sometimes they come out of packs. We used to pitch them against the sidewalk. <laughs> yes, they're going with kids. Right. Yeah. When so we didn't know better. <laughs> yeah. when, what Brian does every break. When he sorts your cards. Yeah, yeah. yeah when Brian sorts your cards. That's what he does. So there are some things you can do sometimes to try it. We try our best. If a corner is dinged on a card, we try and flatten out as best we can. Um, just so you guys know, when we say about trying to help cards uh, or we review your cards, I'm never going to use a chemical. There are people that are doing that right now. I don't, I don't believe it. I think it's really wrong. I also think what's going to happen, uh, what, let me take a step back. There are people who are polishing cards right now and grading them. What's happening with the, the market and cards is we're getting cards that are encapsulated with chemicals on them, and these are... These are, aren't susceptible to air, right? So what's going to happen? They're going to start to tarnish, yeah. uh, especially the Bowman Chrome baseball market, the Prism market. I see this all the time. So be aware of that. I think that'll be something we'll start to see in five and ten years. Is cards encapsulated PSA tens and BGS tens that are staining? How is that possible, right? Um, so there's something to think about with that. We usually will just try and flatten them out, make the make the appearance of the card best. We use microfiber cloths. We clean it the best we can. Uh, if the card frays a lot, we try and work on the edges to make that uh, as smooth as possible. Um, but we're not doing anything that uh, shysty. Unless, well, I gotta keep my eye on Brian though. You yeah. know no. Brian, shysty guy. Guys so. like mixing up little chemicals and like in two tips. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, does it work? Yeah, it does work. But at the same time, I don't. I mean, you, you know what I'm talking about, right? All the what? chemicals and the people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see them posted online all the time. Yeah. So we won't say names, but we know some of them. They don't notice that. They don't notice a certain shine to it or something that makes. I mean, these it are guys. Some minor imperfections. Yeah, like minor imperfections and stuff. You can also screw your cards up that way too, so don't try start doing that. Um, what are some issues we can see with edging? Edges, because this is important. Four edges on a card. What are some issues you can see with that? Like, like, Yeah, look at, I guarantee you, prism cards or Topps Chrome, look at how they fray. Holy cow. When we do breaks, we get white fraying all of our shirts on the breaker mats. Um, that can be worked out. You can kind of pull that out. Um, but that's very important. Edge grade is those fraying marks. When you say work it out, are you like using, what are you using? So I use a microfiber and I'll just kind of, you know, I'll, I'll smooth it out, um, try and get them to lay down the frays. Uh, and uh, sometimes we'll, uh, um, I can pinch it as well. And you can be a little bit more aggressive with some of the chrome cards. Like the, 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 uh, the tops or the glossy mats, I wouldn't mess with them too much. They're very, very bitty and you can screw up a card. Yeah. I got a question. Yeah. With all like the top chrome, they always seem like they're bent backwards. Does that affect? Oh, you're talking about warping. Yeah. yeah. Does that affect? Okay. Like, that like I yeah. feel like every top from I've ever opened is like it's like a Pringle. Okay, yeah. I have an answer for <laughs> it. Anybody, anybody have any thoughts on that? You guys ever see you ever see a graded slab? 
I mean, and see a card <laughs> warped in it. Never seen a card they do. warped inside. Yeah, sometimes they'll have them. You got to take a look at your cards. It's a great question. Uh, there's supposedly a subjected level of warping that they'll, is acceptable um, when you grade cards. Um, I hate the Chrome cards when you open up the boxes and they're just, just yeah. And heat has a lot to do with that when it kind of cr causes them to curl. Um, can you put it in a top loader and put something on top of it? Yeah, you could try that. Yeah, yeah. I always I always recommend if you have like a Chrome card to put them in a very thin top loader, um, especially if it doesn't fit very well. They have to definitely press it. Um, you could try that. Um, but magnetics actually will make those worse because they give so much space in a magnetic, right? Unless you put them. Yeah, they continue to bow. Do you want me to live on my phone? Yeah. Whatever you want to do, it's I'm going to end yeah. it there. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and um, show you guys something that I think is very important. Talking about pop reports, and then I want to open up for questions. It's 8 o'clock, so we hope to go from 7 to 8. All right, real quick uh, surface. What can be wrong with the surface of a card? Dimple. Okay, what's a dimple? Do you see dimples on only like certain types of cards, or is it on? It could it be on any card. Like a little What's bubble to me, or something. Okay. To me, like a little bubble that forms in it. So there's like bubbles. Like some of the older vintage cards. Yeah. Get those. The little bubbles, little something like that. So I think what Travis is talking about are actual dimples that we see uh, in, in these chrome-like technologies. It's like it's spot or something. Yeah, it's like it, it didn't get filled or pressed right mm. with the plastic. Um, yeah, it's like it's it, it's a dimple of a golf ball. If you see them in your card, they will affect your surface grade. They definitely will. Small ones that are a little bit un more notice unnoticeable. We I've, we've seen that pass, right? Yeah. Um, a couple of them they'll let they'll let it slide. Yeah. There, there's like five or ten. They'll uh, like your your, your Mahomes select silver, right? Time number three, submitting it. Let's see if I get it right. <laughs> Ryan's gonna spend four times the card's value in grading fees on that one. Go so <laughs> if you're watching PSA and Beckett, help Brian out with a select Mahomes. No, um, why is surface uh, a little bit more subjective is because there's so much surface front and back, right? So when it comes to the surface of a card, if you see imperfections on it and they're not that glaring, don't worry about it too much, okay? Chrome cards, you might get a little scratch or a little something here and there. That's not going to really crush your surface grade. Um, creases, on the other hand, are very detrimental to a card, right? Creases, um, specifically when we talk about vintage, I don't care what the card looks like. If you have a crease in your card, whether you can see it or not, Micro crease, big crease, it's going to be probably lower than a three or four overall grade. It's just kind of how they are. Um, well, it's scuffing. Be very careful how you store your cards, right? S sleeves are very important because of scuffing, friction. Um, 1993 Upper Deck Jeter foil card. You guys know what I'm talking about? He's uh, underrated. SP. SP, premium. right? Uh, really yeah. important card, right? PSA uh, 10 just over 100. Bad memory. You had one? Yeah. Oh, okay, we won't bring it up. No. But the PSA 10 just sold for 145000 in auction. Um, by the way, Aluka Doncic, should you guys pay attention, uh, $237,000, by the way. For $77,000. For a car that was numbered out of 99 sold the other night. And a LeBron James is up on auction on Heritage right now. The RPA exquisite at two hundred eight. It's a B, $208,000. We're talking about modern cards. Which Luka was that? It was the $77,099 RPA MT. National Treasures. National Treasures, 77 jersey number. $232,000. On eBay, and it was paid for. 237 Yeah. And he bought it from China, like, the year before. Jamil. Yeah. Mags. Yeah. I see people online that swear that mags scratch cards. Sure. They will never put a card in a mag, and if they do, they put a top loader on top of the card. Sure. They don't put the card in a top loader, but they put yeah. it on top and then close the mag. What? Yeah. I see you just put them into the mag, so that's what I, I do whatever yeah. you do. No, it's, it's, so, a, it's a great question. Okay. I don't like the sleeve on top of a, a Chrome card. I think it, yeah, I, because there's a lot of reasons why it can cause it can move right. There's the sleeve is not put in right. The corner of those are sharp. They can mess other parts of the card up. Um, I'm not a big sleeve and a, a mag guy. There are people who swear by it and they swear specifically baseball. Bowman Chrome, Chris, you did that back in the day, and you guys know Bowman. People will crucify you if you put it in a mag. Prism oh, basketball last year. Uh, that's just the base prism. We're not even talking about. So Chris, look at this. That's the base set. Look, Prism Emergence, Prism Fast Break. That's just the base set. <laughs> so 67,000 cards have been graded. It's gonna blow your mind. This shouldn't be right, this shouldn't be true, but 49,000 of those 67,000 got gem in tens. Hmm. So the pop report is massive for cards that got PSA 10 on Prism. All right, so there's that. Let's go ahead, and then what it's doing is telling you how many there were per. If you see here where it says a plus, that means that it was, um, that's the 0.5. So 8.5, there'd be 68.5 cards that were graded. That makes sense. And then the Q means how many have qualifiers. All right. So let's just click on it really quick. And 
it tells you that, gives you some information about the set, which is kind of cool. Ryan, you know where I have a PSA 10 Luke in the back? You grab one. You know where at? Where the hollow is? No, just the, I just want to look at a, a Is it where the hollow is? I'm uh, it's in one of those two boxes, yeah. Oh, sorry, guys. Low-budget internet. Oh, man. Oh, I know what it's doing. It's actually loading the number of it. So what this does is it's going to pull up the whole list of them. So what we can do from this is you can actually look at every card in the set, everyone that's been graded by PSA, and every grade that it has, and you can figure that out. That's what it's loading right here. Did you get one, Brian? You're still looking. All right, the reason why I want to show you this way, this is the whole way to do it. The app, you guys don't have it, download the PSA app. You can scan the barcode, you can you can type in the serial number on your phone and it will pull up all this information like that. Okay? PSA app is really, really good. When you're deciding what to bring from like a selling perspective, do you actually go look at the report to see if there's like rarity of this card being graded or not? Um, yeah, absolutely. If, if, what, if, what threshold do you go? As to me, it's not even worth it. It's the whole kind of adage of, uh, you know, supply, supply and demand, right? Okay. Um, Luka Doncic's hot, maybe worth doing it. Right. He's super hot, and this card is a big deal, right? So we'll find, I don't know if it's going to load or what's going to happen here, but it has a serial number here, and has a barcode here, and a QR code. With that app, you have the app? Oh, you have PSA, I have Beckett. Mary, what are we doing Instagram off? Mine or yours? Yours. Okay. There's a PSA app, you scan it, and it will literally just come up, and it will tell you, pop report. I know, I don't know why it's not working, sorry. But I know that this card, there's, I think, 11,000 graded, and I think 9,000 of them are PSA 10. Mm. Did you click it? There it is. I did. Oh, there it just you go. Came up. Look at that. Technology is slow sometimes. <laughs> All right, he's card number 280. Is there a bias to who you said this? Oh, he's hot, right? Well, players or, or graded? Players. Yeah, can find the case Lucas. Well, like this card, you would say, right, there's a ton of them. Why would anybody grade them? But they still hover around 225. Like, like it hasn't gone down. So, 250 today. Is that what they're up? Yeah. So, 280, we're going on the left of the screen. And almost there, sorry. Lonnie Walker. Front door. Taking time from your boy Chimizy Metsu there, Brian. My boy Chimizy Metsu. All right, so you can see. All right. Oh, I was close. All right. Ten thousand have been graded. Mm -hmm. Seven thousand, seven eight hundred are tens, and out of that, another twenty three forty three are nines, and there's only that few little six seven and eights. I mean, that's, that's kind of wild to think about, right? There's that many gem mints in the population. So this is just something to kind of consider when you're we're grading cards. Um, if Luca does take a drop, there's a ton of his tens on the market, right? So something to think about with that. Um, it'd be good to look up Tremezi Metu and other guys that you might be big on. Of can today. I see that? I just download the app. Yeah, sweet. Mm -hmm. you can scan it where you can just input the serial uh, number. Okay. Why is that important? Because when you go on eBay or if you want to sell a card or if you want to value a card, if you have a card that's a pop report very low, here we go. Let's say we got uh, the Choice Prism Green, which is out of eight. Mm. We know there's only eight that exist. There's only one PSA 10. Mm. But there is a nine. So two of the eight have been graded. If that guy has a 10, that card has a massive premium because it's not only an eight out of eight, it's the only PSA 10. Right? What's the uh, pop report on Luca Tigers? 15 Tigers, right? So there's been 24 graded, Brian? Mm. Which means that's got to be out of 50, right? That card. Yeah. Right. So here's the thing, and here's another thing that's very important when it comes to grading. Understand there's one sort of grading market here. We're not even looking at Beckett. How many Beckett 9.5s and yeah. Beckett 10 Lucas are there, right? So there's probably fifteen to 20,000 graded uh, Luka Doncic 9.5 or PSA 10s. That's crazy. What do you think about grading, on, what do you think about grading on cards that are like out of eight? Do you, do you, like, if it's a card that's just got a low run already? Low serial number. How about a one on one? What's yeah. the point in grading a one on one? Yeah, right? Like, yeah. I mean, seriously. Well, I mean, wouldn't you prefer a 9.5 gem mint 101 over a regular? I mean, there's always a premium to that, I think. Sure. Yeah, right. I think always well, grade 101. The rarity of the card, you would like People will comp that 101 against another 101. Yeah. So That's once they do that, you can say mine's worth more, it's PSA 10. Mm -hmm. Fair point. Okay. Yeah. Now, when it comes to, like, the massive cards, like, let's just say a Luka Doncic 101, which last year sold for 40,000, the Nebula, right? Right there. 
And then if you go one-on-one, on one, there could only be one graded, right? Um, but that could actually be two, right? If someone graded it and then cracked it out and graded it again, that could actually be two. Um, that card uh, sold at auction for 40000 is probably worth 100000 right now in the market that we're in. Um, but the reason why you grade it is not to get the 10, but to authenticate the card a lot of the times, too. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Remember, that's that's right. the guy. Yeah, the guy was in Orlando who hit guy. it. Yeah, he yeah. lived in, yeah, me and Chris both were trying to buy it. Sorry, Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> so, does that pop report make sense, what I just did? So, okay. is that right? 7,879? So, why is it important? I think it's important to understand the market that we're in. We... Do you guys agree that we're maybe in a bubble right now in the card market? Do you think it's going to get way better than this? I mean, it's, it's a great point of discussion. I don't know. What do I think. Mean, what do you mean better? But you, you think it, you think like this card, for example, you know, even grading more of these are still going to rise. The popularity of, of PSA tens. I mean, it's still going to grow. Or do you think that we're kind of at that peak when it comes into? I mean, there's a lot of parallels to right now in the '90s. You know, you're seeing a lot of the same parallels. Uh, we don't have base inserts. We have jersey cards, right? How many times you go to card shows or even here you get a jersey card for a dollar, two dollars, whatever it is, you know? Those are now a dollar fifty cents, those kind of things. So I don't know. I mean, I, it, it's a, the economy really dictates a lot of this, right? You know, we're in a strong economy right now, and I think we're all thankful for that. Um, would it help if I show you guys how to do a Beckett, or do you guys, do you guys feel good, or you want to do a Beckett? Beckett's a little different. I would encourage you to just download the app. Super easy to use the PSA and the Beckett app. Did you use it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just type it in or you scan it? We scan it. Yeah, scan it. Sometimes scan doesn't work, but if you type in the serial number, it's super great. You get a card show, you see a PSA card, bang, right? You can know so much from, 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 from just the app. Okay. Um, what should I be looking for when I grade a card? I think that's the question. Maybe we're all here we go. to figure out. There we go. How would you answer that, Beck? How, what? You're new to collecting. Uh, Not new to collecting. You're new to, you're new to getting into serious card. Yeah, yeah. I would definitely look at the centering. Okay. That's the first thing I'll look at, obviously. Make what? sure none of the corners are chipped. But what kind of card? Are you just talking about any card? Let's use a. I mean, obviously like a hot name. You know, okay. Cedric Mullins. Yeah. Cedric Mullins. Yeah, uh, <laughs> rookies. Okay, rookies. Uh, All stars, Hall of Famers. Okay. Um, people are gonna retire. Okay. Soon. So you would you would Dead grade? What would you yeah. say? Dead people. <laughs> I mean, dead people autographs, yeah, yeah. obviously. So, uh, obviously, I want it to be a rookie. Um, okay. That's where the value is going to be. Yeah. Okay. Can there be value in cards outside of rookie cards? Oh, yeah. I think? Of course. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Patrick Mahomes is a great, great buy right now on autographs. You bought it a week ago because his rookie cards are so expensive. So many people are going to want his autograph if he wins the Super Bowl. Well, if you bought it 18 or 19 for 200 bucks, 250, they're like 500 or 700. Yeah, depending on the sport, what position mm -hmm. they play. I mean, you don't want to really send in a defensive lineman. Yeah. Know, for NFL. Hey, don't hate on the DL. <laughs> so, so what would you say about? Let's just use football for example. What would you invest in if it what? I don't say invest. What would you like to collect? Uh, I mean, per teams, uh, depending on what team they are, you know, okay. what height they are. You okay. Know, if, um, yeah, quarterbacks, variations, skill players, okay. variations. Yeah, that's a okay. good one. Short friends. Let's know. talk about autographs. What kind of autographs do you like? Sexy ones. Give me that dollar sign. Hunter <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Green? Yeah. On card yeah. autographs or sticker autographs, right? There's a big, big difference in that right now. You know? I mean, I think it's a horrible example, but go look up a Kobe Bryant autograph that just sold the other day, you know, the day he passed away. That's a sticker versus a non sticker. You'll see a, a very big discrepancy between the two of them because on card autographs are legit. Sticker autographs are signed in sheets and put on cards. So there's a big thing there. I think it's a great answer. Okay, so so we're looking for rookies. We're looking for cards that are well centered. Yeah. Um, the team. I mean, the team. team unless, yeah, yeah. If it's not you know, like your personal collection, like you probably don't want to submit a bunch of you know Jack players. <laughs> Nobody submits Jack players. <laughs> 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 I picked up a sweet Miles Jack card. <laughs> yeah, you did. Didn't you? <laughs> there's, there's a, there's a cool thing though. I think about like that. Right? You, you grade that Miles Jack card. It's probably a pop one if it's, a, if it's like a nine or a ten. You know what I mean? It's so he plays in Jacksonville. Yeah. <laughs> he plays in Jacksonville. So there's elements to that stuff where even as a collector, it's not always about investing in money, right? You keep the card. You get it. You have the only PSA ten Miles Jack of that card. That's a cool thing to have. You know what I mean? To add your collection. So what, what about the difference between grading? Retail pack versus a hobby pack. Like the cards that come out of them? Yeah. Typically, so, go ahead. So, I mean, like, you got all the, the different colors that are only in your hobbies. Right. And so then you got Prism the will use, for example. And then you got the ones that are only in the, in the retail. Okay. So, what's how you judge that? Well, some retail <clears throat> variations are very hard to get. 
Very hard to get. Um, what's some hard ones in retail, guys? The Prism, the Blaster Box is the 25, Green Pulse. Right, the number the one. Green and blue in football? Yeah. No, oh. green and red. And, and red football. and blue. Yeah, red and blue. yeah so I mean, really knowing hard. the cards are important. But again, like that silver, Luka, that's the Luka Doncic, right? We, you can get that in retail or hobby. Right. You can also get the silver in retail or hobby, which is the card we didn't even talk about, right? So I think that there's some cards that cross over that are always going to be uh, deemed hot or the traditional rookie card, which obviously that, that Luka, I think, is the rookie card for Luka Doncic, the prism and the prism silver. People want that card. Um, I mean, retail, you're going to have to always kind of keep in your mind, if you're buying retail only and not hobby, you're probably going to get poor quality cards that come out of it, yeah, if you're thinking about it from a grading perspective. I would, I would agree with that. Would you say that's true? Yep. We see some crap come out of retail when we break sometimes. So, I heard that they like, print the retail last. Is that true? Um, I think they continue to print the retail all year long is what happens, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but in this case with uh, Prison this year, they released retail and basketball well, yeah, before. Yeah, that, but I mean, they... I mean, it makes I, sense. I, I've, seen, I, I've, I've seen that argument that they use a retail packing mass, yeah. and they just want to pump that out, and so that's why the quality as a whole is yeah. more heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Retail is, is a big world, though, now, you know? So, I mean, you can get a lot of very expensive cards in retail. Our buddy at Com C got a one-of-one one Black Zion <laughs> autograph out of a retail box. You know what I mean? Paid 30 40 bucks for it. Um, okay, so pop reports we talked about. We talked about the PSA and the Beckett side of it. Um, other things with cards. So we've kind of focused a lot on modern tonight. I didn't really focus a lot on vintage. I think with modern, you guys are all on the same page, it sounds like. Getting rookie cards, getting solid cards, getting big name players, Hall of Fame, autographs on card, centered well card. These are all going to do well, you know, if you decide to grade them. Um, and I, I'll be honest, I think PSA and Beckett are, 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 I think Beckett's been pretty fair with when we grade cards. I think we look at them, we have a pretty good consensus. There's a lot more variance in PSA. <laughs> Sometimes I think cards an eight gets a ten. Sometimes I think it's a ten, it gets a nine. I just that kind of thing happens. Brian tell you the same thing. We're pretty meticulous when we go through cards, you know, try and help you guys out, not to submit things to waste money. Um, so just to kind of dovetail that, did you guys, Scott, did you get one of these? I guess one of Brian here. These are our new grading form. What do you think? Oh, okay. oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, here's 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 Everybody get a new grading form? Um, Take one and pass it down. Okay. On die cards. Um, like, yeah. uh, it's obviously like on a, you know, the, the more the price, right? It's pretty easy yeah. to see the yeah. cards. The die cut cards that don't have you know, 90 degree edges, yeah. what do they look for in terms of grading an edge? Like, what are corners <laughs> on that? Yeah. Yeah, so die cut cards, um, you, have to, you have to look at centering of the way they're cut, too, um, Travis. So, like, if the, if the cut is off a little bit, they do mark down on that. So, there's a centering of the cut with die cut. If a card has multiple cuts in it, like Select, I know that's a brand that has tons. They're looking at every single element. So those edges, those subgrades, are a premium if they get a 9.5 because there's all these different, you know. Uh, the corners are still supposed to be the four, not the other little corners inside of it. But that makes any sense. Yeah. Die cuts are very hard to grade, especially old inserts are very hard to grade. You can acetate stuff like that. What do you think of the conspiracy theory that the people that go to PSA, like the huge, like, full quarters, that they get better grades than just the common person that has a couple cards in? Are you saying in a capitalistic society people pay for grades? <laughs> I would never say that'd be true. I mean, I think I think it, it happens probably. I, I mean, I, I'm just being honest. Yeah. Cool. Look at this. They had that scandal with that somebody was grading and they owned a lot of cards and he he made cards higher because what was that? You know, yeah, we talked about. Yeah, that was the PWCC scandal last year. We mentioned the national. And, um, yeah, I mean, those things happen. You know. Um, I'll say that if, it, if there's a theory to that, we're grading more and more cards, so that's a good yeah. thing for the store. <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah. How many people do you think grade a card donor resell versus just to keep it? Well, I mean, in the last five, ten years, there's a ton of people getting into it just for buying and flipping now, not collecting, you know. Um, which, uh, you know, I'm not a big fan, but that's also a part of the market, you know. I mean, it is what it is. Um, yeah, I mean, w w we're going to talk next month about selling on eBay. Uh, that's kind of our topic. But the months after that, I haven't really picked yet. We thought maybe we would do a topic on Com C, which is actually a very big emerging market. And the second topic was going to be StockX, which a lot of people are mull about. Uh, I'll just be transparent. I'm selling cards on StockX right now, and they're selling well for higher than eBay. Um, but there's a lot of people who think once the bubble bursts, StockX won't be doing that, you know, because it's not something they can make money on. 
um, which then detracts from the hobby, right? So the, the collecting and what it's we've all been based around. So it's a, it's a very interesting time to be a card collector and card investor for sure. So yeah, I think there's probably some truth to that, Chris. But um, who? Come on, you got a question for us? What 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 grade is your Mike Trout going to get? Yeah. yeah, I mean that's one thing. Great and thicker cards. Are, I feel like thick cards always get a crappy grade. On those. Yeah, it's not a crappy grade, but yeah, they have a grade as good as for us. You know, or just a regular you know, base card. Yeah, or it's got a patch in it. You know, it's got a little crease. On sure. The or like how it's been sitting in the pack has been yeah, pressed. Yeah, yeah. All those things. They're great points. Um, <laughs> I, thick cards. Brian and I don't like grading them. I'll just be honest. I mean, they're very insane. It's like a top inception, like graded. They're very, nice very hard cards, to get. Yeah. 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 It's tricky. It's tricky with thick cards. And then when they when they are graded nine five, I don't feel like there's a big enough premium on those. I feel like they should have a bigger premium when they're gem mids, so and it kinda is what it is. But National Treasures is a brand in football and basketball that's a massive thick card that you know what I mean, kinda pay attention to. Your Eloy is a flawless, right? That's a thick card too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, real quick I just go over this form just really quickly. Why do we have this form? Uh, it's just kind of to spell it out. It talks about how much it is to grade a card with us. It's flat fees. We're not going to play the, we sent a little bit this month, a lot more of that, so it's less or more or less or more. It's going to be straight up. PSA, we have a deal right now, 65 day. It's uh, $99 declared. It's $13 a card. If you submit 12 or more, it'll be, just, sorry, if you submit 20 or more, it'll be 12 bucks. That's probably the best value grade in the store, um, to be honest with you, if you're grading rookie cards, stuff like that. Uh, we have a 30 day. The max declared value on it is $4.99. It's $28 a card. Um, there's a little section on the right that says Mealy Pops Review. Has anybody had us review your cards here? Yeah. No? Mm -hmm. How, did you get them back here or not yet? Um, I got the ones that didn't pass back, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But those are cards that, like, Beck, he paid four bucks, whatever it was, and yeah. we said, look, man, you're going to probably lose money on this. Yeah. You know? So, Chris, you've done it with us, right? Bunch reviews. Um, uh, Scott, you've done some reviews. You haven't got all any back yet, right? You just started with that, right? Yeah, I had a couple. I got the the Alonzo, the thick card Alonzo you sent off for me. Got gemmed. Yeah, yeah. That was, and that was a one that really that looked well. I mean, Brian and I are gonna look at it and be honest with you guys. I mean, and if you want to still send it in, we'll send it in for you. That doesn't bother us. But probably seventy percent of my reviews come back to me. But I'd much rather that than spend the money and have it all the, the extra money to have sure. it sent off. And yeah, the ones that I've sent have all come. I mean, it's been great for the four bucks. It's worth it. We did pretty well, well with well, um, well worth it for the four bucks. Yeah, and so that, that's something to think about if you guys want that. Um, the one thing that's different about PSA on the Beckett side is, um, the one thing that's different about Beckett is that they charge for autograph grading. So it's always $2 extra if you have an autograph card, which stinks, but kind of is what it is. Um, we made it pretty straightforward. I can email you this. You can type it in. It's so much easier for us when we're cataloging it and sending it in versus us trying to come up with it. And then just signing the back. I just want to talk to you guys really quick. The statement says this. I understand that all grading fees are to be paid up front. We're going to change that. You're going to uh, drop off cards. Uh, we'll charge you uh, on the front side. Um, we'll ship them off to you. And then it says the thing about the upcharge. So if you grade a card with PSA and it gets a PSA 10 and it's not worth a ton more money, you're understanding that you're going to have to pay more money for that. So um, we're not going to eat that cost. <laughs> so, I have a dumb question. Yeah, no, it's great. Go ahead. You and I have, you and I have uh, the exact card. Uh-oh. Okay. You send it to you send it to Beckett. I send it to PSA. They both come back tens all the way through and everything. Which is worth more? A, a BGS ten or a PSA ten? Is that what PSA you're saying? PSA versus Beckett. They both came back. Both the equal your card and my card came back, and we were, well, they were both graded out as tens, pristine. Well, let's say PSA ten. Let's make sure we get the verbiage right. PSA ten and a BGS ten or a BGS just nine point five. No, the, the best in both. The okay. Best in both. So. so it's hard because the black label thing they're doing now. If you ever get a black label, it seems a unicorn. It's incredible cards. So I would say a BGS 10 and a PSA 10 across the board, you're going to value a PSA 10 higher. I'm sorry, a BGS 10 higher. But the, the problem with that is there's very few BGS 10s. So a PSA 10 parallel to me, it kind of goes like this. You got 9.5 Gem in and Beckett. You got PSA 10 over here and uh, their highest. And then you have BGS 10 as a little higher. Right, it kind of snakes up that way. So it's kind of hard to answer that question. I think the levels aren't equal, so it's not fair to do it that way. Now, a PSA 9 versus a BGS 9, I'd probably always rate a PSA 9 higher. If that makes any sense. Yeah, and a PSA in vintage, always, always, always higher than BGS. Um, on some of the modern stuff, though, uh, it's interesting. If you've ever studied basketball inserts in the 90s, BGS sometimes is a little higher than PSA grades. So there's some things there as well. Now, are you like going to keep track of this, like we know when it goes out and stuff, or is this just? 
So, we'll, oh, well, I mean, I guess you could always, I guess, like PSA, let's say you submit some cards to me, and it's not going to go out the next day. It's going to go out when we have enough cards to send off to make it make sense. Right. So then, when it goes off, PSA receives it on a certain date. You can always ask me, say, when did PSA receive the order? And I'll be happy to give you that date. The problem with it is, it's not guaranteed. So, you could count with all you want, you know what I mean? Like, we got stuff with PSA right now that I was looking at her. We just had an order that came back from the national. It was like 160 days. Like it was an 85-day order. It was double. I mean, it's crazy. Um, but I'm working on that with PSA. I have a rep now, and there's some things going on there that I think will help us. So, well, What do they charge in national to get it done right then? And there? So expensive in national. So expensive. PSA is very expensive. Beckett is very expensive. Um, I think the the turnaround of Beckett for a two-hour, two, two hour, wasn't it like... Five hundred dollars? No. Yeah, or something like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. That's why they get rid of the expensive cards. But with PSA though, I mean but you gotta remember like if you submit the same card to PSA and it's worth ten thousand dollars, they're gonna charge you two thousand dollars or whatever it is, you know? So um, all right. We don't have to stop talking. I'm happy to answer questions afterwards as well. Um, would you guys like to do a class next month on selling on eBay? Is that helpful yes. to you yeah, guys? Yeah, sure. Okay. Definitely. I've learned a lot about eBay in this past year that I never thought would happen. They are really getting hard with sellers and new sellers on eBay. So we'll do that uh, next next month. And then are things like ComC, I mean, would you guys, would it be helpful if I talk to you about what ComC is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm interested in it. I mean, okay. Honestly, I got so many freaking... Like couple dollar cards. cards Brian, like, give a quick testament about ComC for you. I mean, I sell a lot of stuff on ComC. Low numbered stuff, stuff you could say is junk. I sell a lot on ComC. You determine the price, though, Brian. You like, do. You yeah, do. Okay. Yeah, you, you but but do. if it doesn't sell within six months, they give you shit or just say, you you do do keep it. Keep it. They, they do auctions. No, no, no. You can do auctions. Okay. Yeah. They we'll charge you like a penny per month after three months. Okay. Yeah, it's a penny per month uh, per card. Per card. After uh, uh, two months, if it doesn't sell, over 75 cents. But if you have cards that are cheap and you want to lower the prices, you know, those kind of things. And you still get fees, though, when you sell the card to this. Like yeah. Also. yeah, it's not as bad. Yeah. And they just started a thing where you can send to them, and they'll make it, you can put it up for an eBay auction if you want, on their eBay big, you know, yeah. ComC site. So no, that could be something we talk about. I will do eBay next month. We'll do ComC the month after that. And then if you guys want to do StockX in April or something like that, we can. Um, is this platform helpful? I mean, I'll get a better computer so I can yeah. do more up here. Yeah, man, it was great. Back and forth and talking. Oh, that was good, man. Okay. Yeah. 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 The people online, they couldn't hear you. <laughs> but grading, but grading, yeah. seriously though, guys, grading is, um, I'll just say this. It's not a science. It's not like an exact science. And I can't, I'm not sitting here saying we'll guarantee you this, this, and this. Brian and I will help you the best we can. But I think you do a 